Okay, this is the second part of um, N. Gregory Mancuse, Chapter 4. And here we're going to be looking at the individual components of supply and demand. First, we'll look at a change in demand. Now, a change in demand, other than unlike a change in quantity demand, is a shift of the demand curve. So the entire demand curve either moves to the left or to the right. We call that a shift. And it is caused by a determinant other than the price. And these determinants are, the price determinant is market price, non-price determinant is consumer income, prices of related goods such as complements or substitutes, taste, do you like the good or not, expectations, what do you think is going to happen in the future, and we'll go through some examples. Now, consumer income. For something known as a normal good, with this type of uh, item, by the way, consumer income is the amount of money you have in your pocket. For a normal good, an increase in income will cause an increase in demand but the entire line is going to move or shift to the right. So at every price, you're going to buy more of the good than before. Now, examples of normal goods are anything that you would buy more of if you have more income. So they could be going out to movies. They could be going out to movies, not renting them at home. They could be going out to a nice restaurant as opposed to fast food. All of these would be normal goods, assuming you have an increase in income. <clears throat> now, an inferior good, when there's an increase in income, there'll be a decrease in demand, or demand will shift to the left. You will buy less of the good at every price. Fast food restaurants, seeing movies at home, on Netflix, all would be examples of inferior goods. This has nothing to do with a value of whether a good is better than not. It is just strictly a relationship between the amount of money you have and whether you'll buy the good. Some people feel that spam is a normal good. If they have an increase in income, they will buy more spam or more things that are made with spam. So in our field, normal or inferior has nothing to do with perceived quality of the good. Okay, we'll go on to the next slide and substitutes and complements. Now this gets a little tricky. I'll, there'll be another slide to clarify it after this. When a fall in the price of one good reduces the demand for another good, the two goods are called substitutes. So this would be like Coca-Cola and Pepsi. This would be like different um, authors of a book, different movies you might see, um, different uh, fast foods, Burger King versus McDonald's. So just think about that for a bit. When the fall in the price of one good reduces the demand for another, the two goods are substitutes. So when the fall in the price of Pepsi reduces the demand for Coca-Cola, Coke and Pepsi are, in the mind of the consumer, substitutes. Now, when a fall in the price of one good increases the demand for the other good, the two goods are complements. Complements are goods that go together. Um, so, going to a movie, one must have popcorn. Using a computer, one must have a printer. With paper that you write on, one must have a pen. So, you know, look at this definition again. When the fall in the price of one good increases the demand for another, the goods are called complements. So when the fall of movies increases the demand for popcorn, the two goods are complementary. Businesses oftentimes run their business on the basis of complementary. Item. So they'll reduce the price of one good, hoping that that will bring you in so that they can sell you a more expensive item. Compliments. Alright, let's look at the next slide. 
And here is an example of complements and substitutes. Now the top graph is the initial good, and let's see, it looks like it's demand for CDs. Now a change in the price of the initial good affects the good that is related to it. So let's say this is um, CD prices have gone down from two dollars to a dollar fifty and that has uh, let's say that's decreased the demand for cassette tapes so that would be a shift in the demand for cassette tapes now what might be a complementary item to CDs let's say it's um, CD cleaners so decrease in the demand for CDs increase in the demand for CD cleaners. So depending upon what happens to the price of CD, it will have a shift to the left for anything that's a substitute for CDs, or shift to the right for anything that is a complement of CDs. Okay, now there's other demand determinants, tastes and expectations. Tastes are very simple. Anything that increases one's desire to buy the good is a taste, and that would shift the demand to the right. Anything that decreases the, demand, the desire for the good uh, would shift the demand for the left. So I, if, I, if I like a particular brand of pants more than another, I like blue jeans, my demand curve is going to shift to the right. If I don't like blue jeans, demand will shift to the left. Expectations are things that happen in the future and how that will affect my demand today. So if I expect something will, <coughs> will happen, how is that going to impact my demand today? So let's say it's a hurricane. I'm expecting a hurricane in five days. I'm going to be buying a lot of batteries, a lot of flashlights, and a lot of survival types of things. So my demand will increase for those items, shift to the right today, in response to what I think is going to happen in the future. Okay, now let's go on to supply. Nope, first we're going to be reviewing quantity demand versus a change in demand. And price is going to be a movement. Um, income is going to be a shift. Price of related goods, a shift. Taste, shift. Expectation, shift. Number of buyers, shift.